When I roll one die, any side is equally likely to come up. No particular roll is unusual. There's a one-sixth chance of any one side coming up. So four, five, six. When I roll two die and add them up, that's a seven. There's a nine. There's a five. Some numbers, when the sum is taken, come up more frequently. There's an eight. There's a twelve. Numbers like a 12 come up less frequently than numbers like a 7. That's because for the 12, there's only one way to get a 12. Both die have to come up 6. But for a 7, there's going to be actually a couple ways to get a 7. There's that way to get a 7, and this way. This is two different ways to get a 7. That might not make sense until you see it on colored die. When you use colored die, you can see that there's a possibility of black four, yellow three, or a yellow four and a black three. With the white dice, you can't tell, but it's still two different dice, so there's still two different ways to get a seven. And of course, there's others like a two and a five, or one and a six. So it turns out you're more likely to roll a seven than you are a 12, or any particular double. Double, double threes, double fours are also gonna be equally unlikely. When you go to three dice, the chance of rolling a 3 is very low. This here would be an 8. This is a 11. You're most likely to roll something in the middle, like this, a 12. That's going to be... There's many ways to get a 12 on 3 dice. But there's only one way to get a 3, and there's only one way to get a 30. Uh, sorry, an 18. One way to get a 3, and one way to get an 18. That's the only way you can get an 18. That's a 1 in 216 probability. And if I jump up to 5 dice, the probability of rolling a 5 is less than 1 in 7,000. Over 7,700. Uh, the most I could roll is a 30, and there's also a very low probability of rolling a 30. Every single die would have to come up 6. What I want to look at today is what those numbers distribute like. Like, what is the most frequent roll here? Here I've got 15, 21, 22. What is my most frequently occurring roll? And what is the shape of the histogram for, say, five dice? And how would that differ from other dice? And, and what shape is that histogram? In other words, I want to know the shape of randomness. What does random look like? Rather than using the dice here on the towel, I'm going to go ahead and do this in a spreadsheet as it will let me do a lot more rolls, uh, a lot more efficiently. I'm going to use the same model I used for the one die spreadsheet in an earlier video, which I will link below, covered how to set up one die. And I'm simply going to expand on that to allow me to roll five die and see the shape I get. In column A, I have a function in A2 on down to A301 that models five dice. You can see that at the bottom of the screen here. Each of these are one die, and then I've added them up five times. There'll be a link to a video on how to set up one die, and this is just an extension of the idea. So I'm rolling five dice 300 times. You can see the 300 over here. The numbers can be seen here in A, fairly often in the teens and 20s. 30 would be the largest possible number, very rare. 5 would be the smallest. And here in column C, we can see the class upper limits. In column D, the frequencies, which are plotted in the graph below. And in column E, the relative frequencies. From the frequencies and the relative frequencies here, we can see that the most frequently occurring appears to be 17 or 18. Remember that category, that class, that interval includes 17, up to size 16 and 17, sorry. And then 18 and 19 would be the next one up. It's only different by two at 57. So it's someplace between 16, 17, 18, and 19, according to my 300 uh, 
roll, 300 roll of 300. And so the shape I get is this shape seen here in the graph. It looks like a bell shape, like an old fashioned bell, or maybe a mountain. This is called the normal curve in statistics, or we refer to it as being normally distributed. It's got little bumps in it, but it's roughly normal in distribution. And that's the shape you get when something varies randomly, when there's nothing driving the system in any particular direction. That's random variation. These are just dice being rolled, and how many times. Since dice are a mathematically calculatable entity, I can actually calculate what the theoretic shape would look like, or the shape if I just kept rolling, essentially, an, a number of times approaching infinity. And that's over here. Over here you can see one, two, three, four, and five dice. And then this here is a chart showing you what each distribution looks like. For one die, the probability of rolling any particular number between one and six is one over six, or about 17%. That can be seen here in this portion of the, of the chart. For two dice, you can see that the actually the most frequent roll will be here. That's not a six. Remember, this first one is actually a two, two ones, because of the way die work. So this is two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a seven that's the most frequently occurring roll for two dice. And then you can see that there's three dice, and four dice, and finally five dice. This is being calculated from a table up above, and I'll link the spreadsheet. So if you want to take a look at how this works, you can. And off on the side, way over here, is the total number of possible outcomes for six, for one dice, two dice, three dice, four dice, and five dice, 7,776 different uh, combinations, if you will. Well, the graph that you see here shows me how the shape changes. For one dice, they're all 17%, that blue line at 17%. And then for two dice, and this yellow line is three, there's a green line for th four, and an orangish line way out here for five. And you can see that the, as we get more and more dice, we get closer to this shape that statisticians refer to as the normal shape. I think of it as a normal curve because it's what we normally get when something varies randomly. If we have smaller samples, like here I've rolled five dice, but I've rolled them only 30 times. Five dice, also 30 times. And three dice, also 30 times over here. Then the shape won't be quite as smoothly normal. But the shape will distribute roughly normally, although it could be pretty lumpy. Taking a look at at the first five die the first five thirty rolls that's that yellow line it's got a distinct bimodal distribution when we have small sample sizes we won't get smooth normal distributions but we know that if we did more it would smooth out because we saw that on the previous tab of the spreadsheet the thing to note is that the red and the yellow line are the two sets of five dice, each rolled 30 times. One set there in column A, another set here in column B, and these are the frequencies here. And over here are the relative frequencies for each of those cases. For the, five, for the orange and the red, the two sets of 30 rolls of five dice, those two curves are in roughly the same part of the graph, if you will. They have a mean that's going to be somewhere near each other. But the purple line, the three dice one, is definitely different. It starts and ends at different places. It has a different central peak. And that difference in the curves will be exactly what we look for when we're trying to distinguish between two different populations within a sample. I know that may sound confusing to use the word populations, but the the yellow and the red come from five dice samples. There is no real difference. Those differences that you see in those shapes are random. The purple one is different. Let me show you an actual example. What I'm going to do is show you a distribution of leaf lengths between two plants that currently are classified as premnus radifolia, 
uh, both of them are, but um, Pompeii are distinguished as essentially two different species, one called Ori and one called Chopok. Or has a smaller, more compact leaf. I'll be measuring the length of the leaf blade, not the petiole. The flower is more compact also. The other form of Peremna stratifolia on the island is Chopuk. It has a larger leaf visually and a larger inflorescence. So the leaf lengths for the or and the chopuk are recorded here in column A for or and column B for the chopuk. And then I've, over in D, E, and F, built a frequency table for those. Um, this is a third tab in the same spreadsheet. If you're trying to find where we are, we're in the, the Premna tab. Here, the third tab of the same spreadsheet. And I've worked out the relative frequencies for the lengths of the ore and the chopuk, my classes are 3 centimeters, 6 centimeters, 9 centimeters, 12, 15, and 18 centimeter lengths. And of course, how many leaves are within each of those intervals or classes. So that's 0 to 3. This would be a, from 3 to 6, but greater than 3 and less than or equal to 6. So the ore histogram looks like this. And the chopuk histogram looks like that. The histograms for the two different plants look very different. These are actual histogram charts done from the original data. If I shift to using a line chart so I can combine both the orange and the chopuk onto the same graph, you see this shape here. Here we see a distinctly different distribution between the two plants. The ore has a fairly normal distribution centered in that central column of 3 to 6. The tropuk seems to have a more bimodal distribution, and the middle of that bimodal distribution is up around 9. Somewhere around uh, 9 is the middle of that distribution. The average is up around 9, whereas for the, for the ore, it appears to be somewhere around 6 to 7, and, and somewhere in possibly uh, probably far, based on the total the, the upper chart, maybe it's actually a little under six. So there does seem to be a very different appearance in the two distributions. And distinguishing between two distributions will be part of the mechanics that we develop. One of the difficulties here is the ore is, appears to be somewhat normally distributed and the tropic appears to be somewhat bimo could be bimodally distributed. Although again, random variations as we saw in the distribution of these five dye, that bimodal is simply a random difference. The five dice will eventually, when rolled more often, create a normal curve, not a bimodal distribution. But the mechanics of how we determine whether or not these two might be statistically significantly different populations, the or the tropuk. Uh, are an important part of uh, statistical research. In this case, potentially the question of whether or not these two should be the same species or should be two different species. In Western science, they're considered the same species, but on Pompeii, they're clearly identifiable as two unique, different plants.